Thank you for joining me on our introductory episode of For Divas Only, Radio TV Talk. Moments of talk with a solid foundation. You might be saying to yourself, who is she and where did she come from? Well, I am Rente, Cheryl Rente, and I've been around a very long time. I'm an author of three books, going on four. I am an entrepreneur, spoken word artist, and a woman of purpose. I'm not among the famous or the elite nor the overachievers. Maybe just a little bit. I'm not a rag to riches story, not for a long shot. But my point is, I have no hard life story, no tell-all secrets, nor have I risen from ashes to fame. I just have thoughts and life experiences full of ups and downs and great disappointments, small victories that made life worth living. I have family, few friends, and a great love in my life. And I have Christ. So it's all on a solid foundation. It is here on our forthcoming episode that I will speak to confirm that we understand our greatness. Because sometimes in a world that won't allow your light to shine, we need to be reminded of that girl power within us. Made from the rib of a man, not as an afterthought, but as the completed thought of God. Women have gone through some things, from divorce to abuse to rejection. It all plays a master role in preventing us from seeing who it is we really are, and we miss what God has planned for us. Divorce and breakups brings about a feeling of failure, even if leaving him was the best day of your life, and I'm just speaking for myself, girlfriends. But the Bible says... He who finds a wife, that means a girl, a lady, a single lady, finds a good thing. You were and are a good thing. You are a good thing. And if a man is blessed enough or wise enough to find you and to keep you and treat you accordingly, then he understands he has found a good thing in you. I mean, James Brown says it. It's a man's world, so they want to think. But the truth of it is, it would be absolutely nothing without a woman or a girl. Sure, I am talking to women married, single, and otherwise. And if you're single, let's face it. The dating scene sucks and brings rejection. I don't care if you're 19 or 99 years old. And that rejection makes you feel less than because we don't realize that rejection is sometimes God's protection. We haven't been told that sometimes you are rejected because the other person does not feel worthy of you. Do you not know that sometimes your very presence of being wonderfully made will remind others of who it is they are not? Yet we take rejection so personal and sometimes it's not even about us at all. See my loves, when we have our moments of feeling less than, or when we allow failure to invade our thoughts, when feeling unloved because of rejection, or maybe simply because we're single at the moment, know that those thoughts do not come from the Almighty God. He perfectly made you. So how could he think anything else? Those negative thoughts come from somewhere outside yourself, from one I call the enemy. Ultimately, it's Satan who uses family, loved ones, strangers, situations to plant negativity in your very being to stop your light from shining. Satan never wants you to know who it is that you really are. 
So the next time the enemy attacks your thoughts, please remember Psalms 139 and 14. I'll praise thee. For I am fearfully and wonderfully made. See, my beautiful black women, this is T. Don't trip. I am here to tell you that you don't have to be all that to be all that because the truth of the matter is you've really been all that all the time. I am clear that this is the age of the woman. And it begins sometime in the year 2000, but the moment Michelle Obama, the first lady of the United States, became that, she brought that to the forefront. See, I'm not referring to the feminist movement. That was a different time. That was a different thing. But I am talking about a new movement when people begin to realize that the woman is to be reckoned with. She is the counterpart that makes all things perfect. She's beautiful, intelligent. She's loving. She is mother, sister, wife, daughter. She's everything traditional, yet she is progressive and extraordinaire. She embraces her place in the home. She is a world influencer all the same. She's a world changer. She's now in politics. She's the CEO, the prime minister, and hopefully one day she'll be our president. So yes, so yes Michelle Obama brought to our attention the age of the woman. And even more significantly than all of the above, First Lady Michelle Obama put black women on the world's map as the beautiful, intellectual, loving beings, as black queens that can no longer be overlooked. Now, this is not about black women. It's just about women. However, this woman, meaning me, has a deep experience in being a black woman. So I will speak from that space. For the truth is, all women have the same plight. It's just that the plight of the woman of color has been a little bit more challenging than our counterparts. Yet they are the same. When women rise, all women of color rises. When black women rise, all women rise. When women rise, the world rises. Whether it's Still I Rise by Maya Angelou or whether it's Rise Up by Andrea Day, we continue to rise. After all, this is Mother Earth. After all, we gave birth to this bad boy. We are to be reckoned with. In the age of the woman, she is moving out of depression. She's learning not to be vulnerable in her workplace. She is paving the way for all others to feel safe and secure in the workplace because maybe that Me Too movement has placed the abuser, the offender, the racist on blast. As our current government creates a great divide with fear and ignorance, there arises a great majority seeking morality and a justice with a sincere desire to bridge the gender and racial gaps in our country. Women are challenging the government. Women are running for office in the government. Women are discovering themselves again. They're standing up and they're capturing their lost dreams. They're finding their true purpose in life. Women are redefining divahood, preparing to take back the land and govern it accordingly and save the children and save the world. This is the age of the woman. There is a great awakening that is transpiring in all aspects of our life. We are awakening. The women are awakening. The world is awakening. We're looking at it for what it really is. And it is in our heart that we desire to make it a better place for all. For this is the age of the woman and the age of the great awakening. There is a negative narrative that is racing through the time universal. And it says that black 
women, especially the African American woman, is the most disrespected and looked at as less of men. I totally resent that because it's not true. It is not truth. I do understand it is an action. And I'm going to share with you the truth in that false statement as follows. Someone who is lesser than strives to make you feel lesser than so they can feel more than when they know they are truly nothing at all. That's the reality. The reality is that the woman of color is the most sought after woman in the world. She's among the most exotic, most beautiful most precious, her beautiful brown skin, her chocolate skin, her beige skin, her caramel skin, her tan skin, her rich blue berry black skin is most desirable. My darlings, they want your full lips, your kinky hair, your tight curls, and that body. When the world goes to extreme to create the body on themselves, the body of a woman of African descent, you're not lesser than. You're extraordinary. You're not ordinary. You're just beautiful. So don't buy into that. Understand the action of it. But know that it is not a truth. Just because someone says and does something, as you know who, we're not going to mention his name at the top of our nation, does not mean that it's true. It is not the reality. You are fearfully and wonderfully made. So, my divas, I'm going to talk about that after this segment. I don't want you to get caught up on the word diva. I know it has some negative connotation behind it, but it is a very powerful and good word, and I'm going to share that with you in a moment. But over the next few weeks, uh, we will be dealing with inspiration and spirituality, empowerment, love, and relationships. I'm going to do spoken word at every turn that I get. Health, beauty, fashion, and we will honor, honor our black men. See, that's what For Divas Only is all about. To tell you that I love you. To tell you that you're loved. To tell you and show you that you are fearfully and wonderfully made. And to tell you that you don't have to be all that to be all that. Because you've been all that all the time. Because you're not ordinary. You're extraordinary. Welcome to For Divas Only. For our first episode, I want to talk about speaking life, speaking into existence, our perfect atmosphere, period, or at least close to it. So what you see here, you could jot that down, are things that we are going to begin to speak. These are spiritual things. These are not physical things. We can get to that later. But first, our spirit self needs to be strong, powerful. And so as you can see, these scriptures here that you may want to jot, jot down uh, because we are going to be all of these things. Because remember, we are fearfully and wonderfully made. Courageous, victorious, loved, blessed, anointed, healed, beautiful, strong, favored, 
able, powerful, saved. What more could you ask for? If your very being becomes all of these things, then your life really begins to unfold mightily and greatly, and you begin to live life more abundantly. Speak life over yourself. And so we shall begin. Words have power in the natural world. Words can hurt or heal one's feelings and attitudes. In the spiritual world, they also have power. They can change your life, direct your future, and allow you to line up with God's will. Words can carry God's power to literally heal your body, bring financial blessings to your circumstances, and bring the promises of God's word into the natural realm to bless you and your family. Death and life is in the power of the tongue. Now, belief is going to play a very important role in this. Now, I'm not speaking a name, a claimant of doctrine. I, If you can name and claim it, why would you need faith? And why would you need to believe in God? So I'm not talking about that. I'm just talking about the power of speech. See, the role in this speaking life process will require faith. And it begins where the will of God is known. You must know the word of God in order to believe what the word says. For the word of God contains the power within itself to call what it says it's to come to pass. If you believe God's word and use it as God intended for you to use it, then the word will bring the work in your life that you must act on the faith word. Let me say that again. Got a little tongue tied on that one. If you believe God's words and you use it as God intended you to use it, then the word will begin to work in your life. And you must act on the word faith. Faith is, see, if your faith is weak, don't panic. All you need to do is ask God to help my unbelief. And you simply start by speaking positive words in your life. I'm beautiful. I'm loved. I am financially secure. I am gracious. I'm loving. Only good things surround me. I only indulge in the things of God. I keep my mind on things of whatsoever of true, whatsoever things are beautiful. I'm speaking life into my life. And then you must confess with your mouth that is speaking the word. There is a saying which says confession, confession brings possession in order for the power of God to cause something that God has promised to manifest in the natural realm. You must speak or confess his words and agree with God. Then God will back up his promise by bringing it into pass in this natural realm. See, we start with the power of the tongue. Confession brings possession. This means that what you desire and confess comes from the spiritual into the physical, and a spiritual truth takes on physical form in this world. Manifestation. God is a spirit, and those that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. We like to say many times that in God's time, he'll answer your prayer. In God's time, uh, this thing will unfold itself. In God's time, uh, the new thing will manifest. I have learned through study that all of your prayers have already been answered. So what do you mean when you say God's time? God is out of time. He stands outside of time and he looks down through time and he has everything all planned out perfectly in our time. We just need to reach up and reach out and get it what he has already prepared for us. So it's not about God's timing. He's already put it into play. It's about our own timing. We got to speak that truth. We need to go into prayer. We need to change who we are. We need to connect with the spirit so that we can get everything that God already has prepared for us. 
outside of time that he put it in our time. Speaking life more abundantly. Let this be a new beginning for some and maybe an addition to our life uh, for others uh, so that we can begin to uh, speak the truth into the atmosphere. Speaking life out loud and watch what our world begins to do. Watch the transformation. Watch things that God has planned for us begin to unfold and manifest in our life. Is it the love of your life that you seek? Is it a healing of life? Is it a new direction? Do you wish for marriage? Do you want the marriage that you're in to be better? Do you pray that your husband is the man of God that you need him to be and that God needs him to be. Watch the transformations begin to happen. Confess with your mouth and watch how you can live life more abundantly because you're not ordinary. Thank you for tuning in to our first episode. We hope to bring you some good word as we speak life more abundantly. Be blessed.